Welcome everyone to our uh, talk about uh, Strumzy. Uh, my name is Jakub Scholz. I'm one of the maintainers of the Strumzy project. And Hi, I'm Yodo. I'm a software engineer in Apple. So mainly we, we use Strumzy and uh, we contribute to Strumzy. We, so we are basically contribute to Strumzy and the uh, use of Strumzy. And yeah, today we will start by quickly explaining what is Strumzy uh, and how it works. And then we will look a bit more closely on uh, some of the features which we have been working on, on some of the latest changes and updates, and then uh, give you a bit uh, view into the future what we might be working on next. And uh, yeah, we definitely appreciate that so many of you are here because uh, uh, we know that Friday afternoon is not the best time and everyone is already maybe a bit tired, but thanks for being here. So if you don't know what Streams is, then Streams is an incubating CNCF project, which focuses on running Apache Kafka on Kubernetes. Uh, to do that, we use the operator pattern. So we provide different operators for running all the Apache Kafka server components, but uh, also to manage things such as users, topics, or Kafka Connect connectors. And then we have some other, let's say, smaller components which uh, should help you run Kafka on Kubernetes. We have an HTTP bridge to use the HTTP protocol to talk with, uh, with uh, Kafka. We have, for example, some config providers which uh, make it easier to, for example, load data from secrets or config maps when configuring your Kafka applications and, uh, and tools like that to kind of make your life as easy as possible when running Kafka on, uh, on Kube. Uh, I hope all of you know at least a little bit about Kafka. So it's the uh, leading distributing message log and data streaming platform. It's something you can use as a, as a basis to kind of build all various things from integrations of microservices to even driven architectures, uh, even sourcing. Uh, but you can also use it for these kind of more uh, simple tasks such as uh, shifting, for example, metrics or locks between different systems and locations and, and stuff like that. So that's all what Kafka can do. Uh, it has also a great ecosystem of different connectors, clients, and so on. And uh, uh, Kafka itself is not really part of Strumzy. It's a separate project uh, which was originally founded by LinkedIn. Uh, and it's part of the Apache Software Foundation. And Strumzy basically provides the orchestration on top of uh, Kubernetes. Uh, what we try to do in Streams is this kind of Kubernetes native Kafka experience where the operator pattern basically provides you with these custom resources for deploying the different uh, Kafka components. So you, for example, have the Kafka custom resource, which kind of is the basis for creating the, the Kafka cluster. And uh, the operator pattern also allows you to use the declarative uh, mechanisms to manage the resources with tools like GitOps and, and so on. And uh, we really try to make it possible to run and manage Kafka even without really knowing all the Kafka commands uh, out of your, your head because the operator tries to encode the knowledge which the Kafka operator, human operator would have and then give it to you in a kind of Kubernetes friendly way so that if you know Kubernetes and how to use YAML, which is always everyone's favorite, and how to create Kubernetes resources, then yeah, use these patterns to run Kafka as well. And uh, some of the examples where kind of the, the Streamsy logic of the operator helps most compared to, for example, some Helm charts are things around uh, upgrades, reconfigurations, uh, kind of handling the, the Kafka's own discovery protocol for you, things around security such as certificate renewals. Uh, and this is kind of stuff which the operator can orchestrate for you and you don't have to do it uh, manually yourself. Uh, as I already said, we support all the different Kafka components. Uh, so you can use Streams to run Kafka brokers, uh, Kafka Connect, and uh, both versions of Kafka Mirror Maker 1 and 2. And uh, Today, you can still use it to also run a kind of Zookeeper as part of the Kafka cluster, and I will get back to it uh, later in a few slides because yeah, the Zookeeper and the Zookeeper removal, that's a big part of what's going on. Uh, 
As I said, we also have our own HTTP bridge, which you can, of course, deploy through the operator. And uh, we try to integrate with other open source projects for different tasks around the Kafka cluster. So we, for example, use the LinkedIn cruise control project to do Kafka cluster rebalancing to kind of make sure all the nodes are well balanced uh, and have similar load. And uh, yeah, to make it really easier to use use Kafka, that's why we have also these operators for the topics or users where if you want to deploy some service using Kafka, then yeah, you can use Streamsy to declaratively create the user, specify what authentication does it use, uh, what ACL rights does it have, you can create the topic which it will be using, and then all of that can be stored somewhere in some uh, GitHub repo with uh, the deployment YAMLs for the service, and it can be then kind of deployed to the cluster through some, uh, some GitOps mechanism. Uh, we try to handle the whole life cycle. So uh, yeah, we can do the installation in various different uh, ways through Helm, through Operator Hub, but you can also just uh, do the uh, thing which is my favorite and just download the YAMLs and use them. Uh, we handle all the different operations uh, and uh, we of course provide the ways for monitoring the Kafka cluster. So there are Prometheus exports uh, for all kind of metrics and we have some sample dashboards and alerts which you can kind of use to get started. Uh, and we do all kind of security. So we for example have integration for the uh, open policy agent uh, to kind of do authorization uh, and of course we support all these different authentication types such as MTLS, uh, OAuth, password based authentication and uh, stuff like that. And uh, like in all these things we try to kind of integrate uh, with the other cloud native projects so that you don't need to install something new, something special just for for Kafka and for Streamsy, but that you ideally can plug into what you are already using for your other applications and other services. Okay, so that was kind of the intro to what we are doing in Streamsy and how it works. And uh, now in the next part, I would try to go more through the latest features we are working on or we finished. Uh, and really the one of them is, uh, is Craft. So if you are following what's happening in the Kafka community a little bit, you might know that there's this thing called Zookeeper, which, on which Kafka relied for a very long time, but it is now being removed. And Kafka was using Zookeeper for maintaining its quorum, managing its cluster metadata and things like that. And uh, it's replacing it with something called Craft, which stands for Kafka Raft. It's kind of Kafka's own take on the on the Raft algorithm, and it basically means that uh, the Kafka brokers or the Kafka nodes will now take care themselves uh, uh, of managing the metadata, quorum, and uh, and things like that. And uh, this is something what's going on for a very long time. Uh, it actually started sometime in 2019, uh, and it's uh, it's finally finishing. So. Uh, yeah, next year there will be the Kafka 4.0 release, which will not support Zookeeper anymore. And uh, yeah, so in a way it's a bit scary, or on the other hand, it's good to have it finally over. Uh, and uh, what's really happening is that uh, basically until now your Kafka cluster looked something like this, where you had the, the Zookeeper cluster and then the Kafka brokers connected to it. But with the craft, the Kafka nodes will have now two different roles. One of them will be the controller role, which will be kind of the part of Kafka, which will be responsible for managing the, the quorum, the metadata, and kind of orchestrating the, or synchronizing the cluster. And then there will be the broker role, which will be the broker as we know it today in the Zookeeper-based clusters, kind of the part responsible for getting the messages, sending the messages, uh, storing the messages. And what's Maybe a bit special is that these two roles can be combined in the same, same node, same pod, same JVM. So that kind of creates these different architectures where when we start on the, on the left side, uh, you have the kind of uh, production ready architecture where pretty much you just replace the zookeeper nodes with the Kafka controller nodes. 
they run separately because that way you can best control the resources they have. And then you have next to it the brokers which kind of connect to it. But then you might have also the architecture in the, in the middle, which uh, has the controller nodes which are mixed together with uh, the broker nodes. So these nodes do both things at the same time. And then you can, for example, add some more broker nodes to this cluster to kind of extend its, uh, its capacity. And this is something what might be, for example, useful if you are running on bare metal, you have very, very big nodes, then it doesn't really make sense to run there just the, just the controllers, which on its own don't need that much CPU and memory, but you can use this combined node, which better utilizes the hardware. And then finally, on the, on the right side, you have the architectures which use only these mixed or combined nodes. Uh, and those are quite interesting, for example, in some, uh, some uh, use cases around uh, Edge and IoT, uh, but uh, especially for things such as development and testing, this kind of mythical single node Kafka cluster is uh, quite useful as well. Uh, in terms of the timelines, uh, Strimzy already today supports Craft, and if you want, you can use it. But the next Strimzy version, 0.45, will be the last version where we will support the Zookeeper-based clusters. And uh, that's the version where you can still use it. That's also the version where uh, you will have to migrate the Zookeeper-based clusters to Craft. And uh, only after the migration, you will be able to kind of upgrade to a newer Strimzy version. Now, we know that not everyone is kind of eager maybe to jump to craft uh, right away. So we will try to provide there some kind of extended support for this uh, 0.45 version to do some basic bug fixing and CV fixing for a bit longer so that you can, you can use it a bit longer. But uh, yeah, unfortunately, we can't really stop what's going on in Kafka. So yeah, we need to continue in the, in the removal of the Zookeeper and uh, the Strimzy 046 version, which we expect to be released in uh, early 2025. And uh, that will already support the Kafka 4.0, which doesn't really do Zookeeper anymore. And this Strimzy version will already do only craft-based clusters. And uh, yeah, the Kafka 4.0 will also do, because it's a new major version, it will do a lot of other changes as well. So for example, the Mirror Maker 1 will be removed as well. And uh, on the client side, I think it will drop support for Java 8. I'm not now sure my, out of my head whether Java 11 as well, but there are a bit more of these various changes. And if you have existing Zookeeper-based clusters, then of course they won't be left behind. So there is this migration process which you can use to migrate the cluster from Zookeeper to Craft. It's uh, the way we implement it in Strims, it's kind of semi-manual. So uh, there are like two or three steps and you drive it basically through annotations. Uh, we couldn't really do it easily as a completely automatic process because you need to create the new controller nodes, you need to decide what kind of uh, scheduling configurations you might want there, how many resources they might need, and so on. So that's quite individual for each cluster, depending on how it's used, so we can't really create this, this automatically. So it's a bit semi-manual process where you basically first use annotation to start the migration, then uh, the operator takes it uh, somewhere into the half of the process, then uh, uh, you cr create the controllers uh, by updating the custom resources and use another annotation and then Strimzy takes it the rest of the way. So this way you can uh, quite easily migrate the clusters and you can actually try it already today with Strimzy 0.44 or even some of the older versions. But what's really important to understand is that this migration needs to happen within the same Kafka version. It cannot happen as a part of the upgrade. So if you now decide that you want to stick for some time with Zookeeper and wait for the craft stuff to mature a bit more in the Kafka project, then that's fine. But once you decide to do the migration, the migration will still need to happen within the Kafka 3.9 version. So Zookeeper-based cluster on 3.9 will be first migrated to craft-based cluster on 3.9. 
And only once you are using Craft, you can actually upgrade to some newer Kafka version, whether it's 4.0 or 4.3 or something later. That should hopefully not matter, but uh, yeah, it, you will need for some time use the 3.9 version of Kafka with Craft. So you won't avoid this by waiting uh, a bit longer with Zookeeper. Uh, because we know this is quite a big change, they, that's why we created this kind of uh, page which tries to bring together all the different uh, resources around craft and the migration. So yeah, later you can go there and you can share it with your colleagues and so on. It uh, links to the documentation, but also to various uh, blog posts and some conference talks, which we did uh, specifically around the craft stuff, where we go a bit more into detail around the, the architectures of the clusters and uh, have some demos of how to configure it and how to do the migration and so on. So you can use this as a, as a source. And the next feature to talk about is tiered storage, and for that I will hand over. Okay, so tier storage, so as you know that uh, in the past uh, several years, the Kafka community have been working very hard to design and implement this feature in Apache Kafka, and finally it was released in the Kafka 3.6. Today many of the people are already using it in the production. So basically talk about the benefits of the tier storage, it has the many common. The first one is it can significantly reduce the storage cost because the cloud storage is generally much cheaper compared to the local or remote block device. The second part, it can support other use cases. Maybe they require very long data retention. The tier storage feature make it feasible also in affordable price. The third part is the scalability because if you have tier storage, that means your majority of data already shift from your the disk, uh, disk device to the cloud storage. So each broker has less disk uh, attached to it. So it makes it easier to, for you to add a broker, remove the broker. So you can scale up, scale down easily or rebalancing broker. For the reliability part, that's also another advantage from tier storage because tier storage using cloud storage, for example, S3 or HDFS, they generally have a higher durability compared to the block device. For example, S3, they have the 11.9 data durability. So the last part is also the reduce the operation overhead. For example, is it makes the change of the data retention policy quite easier. So with tier storage, if user ask you, oh, change my data retention from one day to one week for a short time because I my consumer have some issue. So it can be achieved with a simple configuration change. And without tier storage, what happened before is it's, it's quite challenging. Either you need to make your block device bigger for each of the brokers or you need to add more brokers. And even more challenging is if when this issue is resolved, if you want to revert back the old retention policy, you need to shrink the cluster. That's introduced a lot more of the operation overhead. So that's kind of the summarize of the, the main benefits of the tier story from Apache Kafka. So in the Streamzy world, because Streamzy goal is make people easier to operate and use Kafka. So we want people to use Streamzy to use Kafka and with this tier story feature very, very easily. So how to make it work? So basically tier story feature require two components. One is the remote log metadata manager and the other is remote log storage manager. In the Apache Kafka implementation, they provide a default implementation for the remote log metadata manager based on the Kafka topic. So in this design, in the Streamzy part, we use that implementation because it's out of box in the Apache Kafka release. For the remote storage manager part, because Apache Kafka don't provide a default implementation, so user need to find any of the open source implementation, or you can you provide your own. But overall, in the Streamzy design part, we make it easier for user to configure them and bring in your custom plugin so that you can use your tier story feature. For example, this is just a, this is an example what the we the API we added in the in the Streamz. For example, in the Streamz the Kafka resource definition, so we add a section called the tier storage part. So if you can see that for the remote storage part, we provide a parameter called a class path. So you can send whatever the class path in your implementation. 
And also we, we, oh sorry, that's a class name. For the class parts, we basically, you can, users can bring in your plug plugin and build to the Docker image so that you can reference or to leverage your plugin. For the configuration part, basically, you can provide any of the configuration for this remote storage manager. And for the remote log metadata part, because the implementation is already in the Kafka itself, so we just need to allow users to configure them in the current existing Kafka configuration section. Like this one, you change the replication factor one. If you want to change two, you can configure it here. So basically, this is all you need to configure your your, your Streamz Kafka so that you can use the tier story feature for your Kafka cluster through Streamz. And uh, it was to call out when you use tier storage and uh, there are some of the limitations currently you need to be aware of. The number one is the compact topic is not supported in tier storage. This is what's already in the design of the, in the Apache Kafka for this feature. So it may resolve later, but now this feature, you cannot use tier storage for this compact topic. The second part is uh, if you want to disable tier storage uh, support feature in topic in Kafka, your Kafka cluster has to be in the keyraft mode. If you have a zookeeper mode, you probably need to first upgrade your Kafka to the keyraft mode, then you can disable this tier story feature for any of the topic in the clusters. So another part for the plugin options, there are also one of the one of the good open source plugin we can found is from Avon. So they provide an open source plugin for the remote storage manager. You can use it. It works with several of the public cloud provide like the S3 and Google Storage. Also, you can pro, you can write your own implementation for this one and bring it to the stream Z with the configuration we mentioned in the last page, and it should just work. And for the release plan, all this change was already merged to released in the stream Z in the 0 0.40, so you can use it today. And we are also in the discussion how to make how to improve this one, make this one the better support in stream Z, and which can happen in a future release of stream Z. Yeah, that's all for the tier story part. I will hand it back to you. Right, so another feature which we added in the last release is support for something we call auto rebalancing. Uh, and that helps you to rebalance your brokers when you are scaling up or down the cluster. So by default, with Streamzy, how it worked for a long time, when you scaled up, then yeah, the node was added to the cluster, but it was always empty, and you had to manually run the Kafka rebalance through cruise control, or for example, reassign the data to the new node using the Kafka reassign partition script. And similarly, when scaling down, you for a long time had to first move the data from the old node, either through creating the Kafka rebalance resource or using the Kafka reassign partition script, and only then kind of delete the node. And, uh, the auto rebalancing uh, helps with this process by basically automating it. So if you enable it because it's it's opt in, uh, then uh, yeah, after you scale up the cluster, then Streams will automatically use the rebalance to move some of the data to the new node. And similarly, for a scale down, before Streams removes the node which should be scaled down, it will first use cruise control to automatically move the data out of this node and uh, yeah, only then delete the node to make sure that you don't lose any uh, data and you don't lose the availability. Uh, so that was kind of what we are working, what we were working on in the, in the past. Uh, now let's look a bit more on the, on the future plans. Uh, hopefully the finishing of the zookeeper removal should free our hands a bit to work on some new features. Uh, one of the things we want to definitely do after Zookeeper is gone is we want to create the new uh, V1 of our CRD APIs, uh, which uh, will be without Zookeeper. And once we manage to do that, then we want to hopefully finally do the Streams 1.0 release. Uh, unfortunately, a long time ago, we made uh, probably some bad decisions when we decided let's wait with the 1.0 release for the Zookeeper to be removed. Uh, yeah, it will be big change and it will happen soon, so why do the 1.0 release before it? And uh, that was sometime in the 2019, right? And we didn't really know how long it will take to get rid of Zookeeper. So uh, yeah, that was probably a mistake, but uh, 
yeah, we sticked with this plan and now hopefully it's coming to an end and we should be able to do the 1.0 release. Uh, we also did some work already around better abstraction of the of the CAs used to secure the Strumzy communication. Uh, uh, I know that there's quite a lot of demand for uh, Strumzy to better integrate the tools such as Cert Manager and rely on, on that instead of doing its own stuff. And uh, to be honest, as a Strumzy maintainer, uh, this is something we want to do on our own as well because yeah, we really want to get rid of us managing the certificates as well and kind of leave it to someone who does that as their main concern, such as Cert Manager. So hopefully uh, with having more time after the Zookeeper is gone, we should be able to push this over the line. But uh, yeah, a lot of different users have a lot of different requirements in terms of how they want the CAs to be managed, who should issue the CAs and so on. So if this is something what you are interested in, then uh, there's a proposal in the Streams of Proposals repository from uh, my colleague, uh, Kate, and uh, that deals about it. So please go there, have a look at it. Uh, yeah, if you find something what you think uh, might not work for you, please comment uh, on the PR and uh, yeah, help us make sure that this will be something what will work ideally for everyone. Uh, and another thing which is maybe a bit connected to it is that, uh, yeah, right now Streams always use the TLS encryption and uh, not everyone likes that. Uh, sometimes people prefer to have less secure environments, but for example, get some performance gains by not using the encryption. But there are also some uh, features such as better integration into projects like Istio, which are kind of related to this because uh, yeah, you don't really want to do kind of double encryption once by Strimzy, then once by Istio and so on. It's quite a waste of resources. So uh, hopefully that should be something what uh, we will try to get to as well. Uh, another feature which uh, we want to look into is uh, using the self-healing feature of cruise control and integrate it into the operator. Now it's not as trivial as it sounds uh, because uh, yeah, we need to make sure that cruise control when it tries to fix something in the cluster doesn't really interfere with what the operator is doing and they, for example, don't break the availability of the cluster by trying to do something similar at the same time because, uh, yeah, there's not an easy way how to synchronize it. So that's kind of one of the challenges, uh, but yeah, we are looking into that, how to kind of enable it and use this feature from cruise control as well. Uh, another thing is gateway API support. So I don't know if you were in any of the talks about the gateway API projects uh, here at KubeCon, but gateway API is kind of maturing and it's a project which basically aims to replace the ingress resources and hopefully provide a bit better compatibility because in Streamzy our experience with the ingress resources is that it can do a lot of things, but a lot depends on what kind of ingress controller you use because each of them does things a little bit differently each of them has different features. So hopefully this will work a bit better with uh, Gateway API. If you wanna use Gateway API already today, it's, it's possible, but it's kind of a semi-manual process where uh, uh, you have to create the Gateway API resources yourself and modify the advertised hosts to kind of roll the traffic through them. So it's possible there's uh, a blog post uh, about it written by one of our users on, uh, on our website. So you can do that, but Ideally, we want to kind of give there a bit better integration directly into the Strumzy, so that similarly to the type load balancer or type ingress or type route uh, listeners, you can do some type gateway API listener and Strumzy kind of does more of the management uh, on its own instead of having you to kind of play manually with advertised hosts and uh, create the gateway resources. Uh, then, uh, yeah, one of the stretch goals is support for stretch clusters. Uh, so uh, the idea of stretch clusters in Strumzy is that Strumzy would allow you to kind of run a single Kafka cluster, which is running across multiple Kubernetes clusters. Uh, I'm not really sure if we will get to that next year because it's quite, uh, it's quite complicated project and uh, the networking around is quite complicated, the security around is a bit complicated. Uh, and uh, 
the thing is that Kafka will always be latency sensitive, right? So even if you can stretch the Kafka cluster across uh, multiple Kubernetes clusters, it won't really work the way how a lot of people imagine it, that you will have one Kubernetes cluster somewhere here in North America, one in Europe, one in Asia, and kind of split the brokers across them, right? That won't really work because of the latency. So it's more when you would have multiple Kubernetes clusters in the same metropolitan area, for example, or sometimes it can be useful for things that rather than running the stretch clusters, you can actually uh, just move one cluster to different Kubernetes cluster by kind of shifting the nodes one by one, for example. So, so that's something what, what we see some interest for and we see some other projects kind of supporting uh, as well for, for things such as databases or various storages. So yeah, we want to try to look into that as well. Uh, at the end, so we are always looking for new contributors. So if you would be interested to join some project and contribute, then uh, yeah, you can definitely consider Strimzy. One thing which makes us a bit special is that we are Java based. So if you are Java developer, you don't want to learn Go, but you want to work with some cool operator, Kubernetes cloud native stuff, then yeah, Strimzy might be interesting choice, but uh, we of course uh, accept uh, all kind of contributions, so it doesn't have to be just code, it can be documentation, opening issues, helping others, providing feedback, speaking somewhere at conferences, and, and so on. Uh, and finally, we had some other talks at KubeCon here. Uh, obviously, it's Friday afternoon, so if you weren't there, you missed them, but if you are interested in uh, auto-scaling Kafka brokers, uh, which was the talk I did yesterday, which shows a lot about the uh, auto rebalancing and the tiered storage and so on as well. Then I think the YouTube recordings will be online soon. So if you missed it, you will get the chance there. And that's it. Thanks. And uh, I think we should have a few more minutes for questions. One, two, one, two. So uh, I have a two EKS clusters, one in the West Coast and one in the East Coast, and uh, two Streamzy Kafka clusters. So what will be the best choice to perform like migration from uh, Zookeeper to Craft Kafka? So should I... <sighs> Turn, so move out traffic from one region and then perform the migration or it can be done uh, uh, like in real time. Uh, so I should deploy the, the second cluster inside the region and using like mirror maker to, to, to uh, move data from one to another or we have a third way just to add additional craft uh, uh, craft uh, nodes of cluster and somehow it can work together with Zookeeper, so combine. So, so what will be the best choice? Thank you. So you don't need to create any new clusters. The migration can do the migration of the cluster in place. The way it basically works is uh, uh, you create the controller nodes so that it starts kind of the craft controllers and they first connect to the Zookeeper cluster to kind of get all the metadata from the Zookeeper cluster. And during this, your brokers are still connected to the Zookeepers and work as before. Uh, then in the next step, the kind of traffic is switched the other way around. So the, the craft controllers, they become the masters and Zookeeper is kind of just a copy and the brokers kind of reconnect from the Zookeeper to the craft controllers and then once you kind of see that it's done and working, you basically just remove the zookeeper and you are done. So, so the brokers, they are rolled, I think, twice or three times during this process, but it's just a rolling update. You don't need to set up new broker. You don't need to set up a new cluster and mirror it. It kind of happens in place to the same Kafka cluster. I think we have time for one more question. Um, well, um. So for tiered storage, the, uh, we've, we've struggled in the past with lots of tiny files 
in object stores when using, not Kafka because we haven't used tiered storage yet, um, but does, does Kafka with its tiered storage do any compaction or any type of managing of file sizes or API calls or is that something that you would have to think about when you enable that for a topic? So I think one thing is the segment of file size. So have you tuned that the one? So you, if you mention you have so many small files, so one thing you can tune maybe the segment file, the default one gigabyte. So you may want to tune it uh, uh, a bigger or smaller. That's one part. And uh, yeah, for our part, the other part, uh, I don't see any of such a smaller file. Do you aware? Yeah, I think you can basically configure and control the file size. It's not like Kafka somehow dynamically decides what's best, but you can tune it for whatever you want. 